Is it something that's going to benefit us now and in the future? And those around us and the earth and generations to come? Or is it poisoning us, poisoning the earth, poisoning those around us, and setting up future generations for failure? Some people think that astronomy is perfectly acceptable while astrology is not and think about all the types of um, ologies there are there's zoology there's uh, psychology there's sociology there is theology and so we know that ology means knowledge this is star knowledge because astro or aster is star some people think it's evil some people think it's a blueprint made by god given to his people to understand to ask yourself what water are you drinking have you hewn for yourself a broken cistern which holds no water have you forsaken the lord like are we are we living our daily lives with tunnel vision thinking about the man-made creations that we've created and when i say we i mean the generations before us because when you get born you just kind of get thrown into this area and remember children become toddlers. Toddlers become preteens. Preteens become teenagers. Teenagers become adults. Hello. Adults become Welcome the elderly. Back. Unfortunately, I had an entire video um, filmed and edited and I tried basically for three days everything I could to get it to upload for the new moon. And that did not happen. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, I really felt call to at least get the information most of it from the other video into a different video so in this video I have added clips of the the effects of the new moon so how we get the crescent moon is because of the new moon it gets reborn from the Sun because of the new moon to remind you is the moon and the Sun coming into conjunction and we know that the moon actually reflects the sun. So when we see the moon in a crescent shape, we know that it has just left the sun. So it, it's, it's just left the, the, um, the darkest part of it because it, when anything comes into um, the sun's vicinity, you can't see it that's why whenever you know the sun is in the sky from the rising to the MC we know that like all the stars in the sky are not there they are there but they're not we can't visibly we can't visually see it and that's why when the Sun goes down the moon comes out typically and then we can start seeing the stars so that's where we get the the crescent moon is because of the new moon so currently the moon is in the Maseroth sign of the um, the goat or I'm sorry the ram um, and it is still there and along with Chiron and the true north so you'll see it there located in the house of the sixth house um, we haven't really gone over what all the houses mean um, but we will get there eventually um, in this video we have um, what the moon and Jupiter look like earlier in the day and early in the evening in the day I mean not what is it 2314 p.m. Uh, so it's just um, a little bit earlier excuse me okay so so the, the newest moon that we just had was in the Maseroth sign of, of Aquarius Aquarius is this sign I would love to encourage you all to get your personal blueprint your personal natal chart out so you can see this for yourself this is currently in the fourth house remember this is like a great clock a great big clock in in the sky 
So you see this, right? It's got 12 signs. And I know in our recent video, we were talking about Capricorn. That was the new moon that we were in. And now we were, we we're in the new moon of Aquarius, which is right next to Capricorn. So clock goes from 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then same with this one. They're not running. I don't have batteries in them currently, but you get the idea. I think earlier I actually said um, MC when I meant the DC, so I'm very sorry about that if I did say that. Uh, the MC is actually in the top of the sky. The DC is in the on the edge. So here, let's see. See, this is where everything sets. So Jupiter is currently setting in the Maseroth in the sky in the heavenly realm right now. And everything on the first house going into the 12th is where everything rises, which is the AC, as you can see. When anything is in the IC, you cannot see it because it's underground. The MC is up at the very top of the sky. Now, if we were to go to a different place, like you will see in the video clips from earlier today, I showed you and I have been showing you uh, what these, what it looks like um, in a different part of the world in Jerusalem, Israel. And so show you this. Luna Cat, don't you dare knock that over, Missy. Okay, so here's Israel. And currently, see what we can't see, they are starting to see in the sky. Oh dear. So Saturn is currently rising in the sky. And it's morning time. The sun is rising. So. Oh dear. It's fine. There she is. <laughs> Come here. So, um, I have a few Bible stories I want to share with you. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possibly as possible. Um, I do want to show you what um, in the tarot what Aquarius looks like. Aquarius is portrayed as the star. As you can see, there, Aquarius is holding two pitchers. One is going into the water, one is going onto the earth. And it's basically speaking the naked truth, as you can see. Um, this actually started off as a man and then through the years evolved into a woman. The most interesting thing about that is the fact that there may be many stars in the sky and there's a scripture that says the sun is, has one glory the moon has one glory and all the stars have a different glory from one another and another thing is is that those who say astrology is evil they don't necessarily understand the language or how to speak it. And sometimes humans fear what they don't know. So we are called to show grace and mercy and, and do our best to expose the truth, right? So another thing is why we're going to continue to talk about Aquarius, even though the moon is currently in Aries, in the Maserat sign of Aries in the heavenly realm is because the new moon represents what's taking place over the next year until the moon reaches that same place. It won't be in the exact same degrees most likely, but it's like a year cycle. So since we had the Capricorn moon uh, last month, 
this month we had the Aquarian moon. That Aquarian moon will last a whole year until that same conjunction of the sun and moon happen in Aquarius again, which won't happen again next year. We will have a full moon, which is where the sun and the moon are in opposition. The full moon of Aquarius will happen in probably in July or August just because the opposite of Aquarius is Leo. And I will show you this so you have an understanding and a visual. Like I said, you can pull this up in your own, in your own chart. So, and you can find the requirements for finding that in Matthew 2, remember. So here is Aquarius, oh, I'm so sorry, here is Aquarius, the squiggly lines right there. And what is opposite of Aquarius? Leo or the line of Judah. So that's how you can always remember where the sun and the moon will be because if it's, that's where we get the months, right? We get the months because of where the sun is located in the sky. If you are in a solar calendar, if you are in a solar lunar calendar, then you go by a whole different thing entirely. And actually we had the new moon happen on February 9th, 2024, and February 10th, 2024 was the Chinese New Year. What is the Chinese New Year? Well, they don't necessarily go by the tropical zodiac like we do here in the West, um, but what they do is they take, they take their sign, so like we're in the year of the dragon this year, and the reason of that is because they go by the transits of Jupiter. So the uh, Jupiter takes 12 years, about 12 years to go throughout the Zodiac. And they go by that. That's why they don't have like, they go like their calendar is much different than the Americans, but they do go by the new moons. And that's why um, on the Aquarius new moon or the second, I believe it's the second new moon of the year after the winter so the winter solstice is when they have their new year. Let's look that up. Okay, so the first day of the Chinese New Year begins on the new moon that appears between January 21st and February 20th, the Chinese New Year. So each year, the new year in China falls on a different date than on the Gregorian calendar. But the, the dates usually range from January 21st to February 22nd, which, or the 20th, which is Aquarius season. So just some a few fun things. Okay, so I want to bring a biblical insight, a biblical perspective to the Aquarius new moon that we have come across. And I think it's pretty fun that we're doing this in the Aries moon right now because Aries represents the head. It also represents the I am, right? And we know who the I am of I am's is, and that is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And every eye shall see him, right? What I think is so cool about this was literally like two days before the new moon in Aquarius, I was reading in the Bible in Mark 14. And Mark 14 was really cool. Okay, so at the first day of the unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, where will you that we go and prepare that you mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two disciples and said unto them, go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. And wheresoever you sh he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, Where is the guest chamber, where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found us as he had said, and found as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover and the evening and in the evening he cometh with the 12 mark 14 that's 12 through 17. what i found very interesting about that while you're studying it um a lot of really really cool things so mark 14 verse 12 
So at the first day on unleavened bread, when he, they had killed the Passover, his disciples said, don't forget that we are reading in the King James Version always and using our Strong's Concordance. Because if you don't know already, that's what I use. Because it's not the Genova Bible, but a lot of, it's not missing a lot of things like a lot of the new verses are. Sorry, my cat is kind of digging her nails in my knee. So it's fine. So. Uh, he sends forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go into the city, and you shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Hmm, interesting. A man bearing a pitcher of water. Oh, I'm having a moment. Oh, I'm having a moment. I'm like, click, 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 things that I didn't even talk about in the last video. Oh, God is so good. So, what happens? Um, he says, follow him. And wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master says, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Guest chamber is G2646 Cataluma, properly a dissolution, breaking up of a journey that is implication, a lodging place. Guest chamber in. Um, and Catalua, it's from... To loosen, disintegrate, that is implication to demolish, literally or figuratively, specifically compare, to halt for the night, destroy, dissolve, be guest, lodge, come to not, overthrow, throw down. And then it has a couple different uh, verses that you could look into if you want to do, to do a deeper study. So, um, so that's what guest chamber is. And he, he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared, there, make ready for us. What is upper room? An ogeon, above the ground, that is properly the second floor of a building, used for a dome or a balcony on the upper story. Upper room. It's from two different words. G, uh, that's G508. comes from G507 and G1093. G507 is anno, upward or on top, above, brim, high up, and it's an adverb from anti, a primary particle opposite that is instead of or because of, rarely in addition to, for, in the room of. Often used in composition to denote contrast, uh, requital, substitution, correspondent, etc. And then it also comes from G1093. Gay, contracted from primary words, soil, by extension, a region or the solid part or the whole of the terrene globe, including the occupants in each application, country, earthly, ground, land, world. I think that's so interesting. Furnished. This is where things start to, like, really be interesting. G4766, astronomy, or simpler form. Stranu, stronu, prolonged from a simpler form, stru, stro, used also in an alternative, certain tenses, probably akin to G4731, according to the idea of positioning, to stru, that is spread as a carpet or couch, make bed, furnish, spread, stru. Um, G4731 is steros, stiff, that is solid, stable, literally or figuratively, steadfast, strong, sure. It comes from G2476, histamine, a prolonged form of a primary word, steo, of the same meaning and is used for uncertain tenses to stand, transitively or intransitively, used in various applications, literally or figuratively. Abide, appoint, bring, continue, covenant, establish, hold, lay up, present, set up, stanch, stand, by forth, still, up. And you can compare that with G5087 is what it says. Astronomy. Think about that. We have, ast we have astronomy, astronomy, which is the study of the planets, I believe. And then we have astrology, which is knowledge of the stars. Okay, so if we define astrology, Google tells us it's the study of the movements and relative pos Oh, I'm sorry. This is astrology. The study of the movements and relative positions of the celestial bodies interpreted as having an influence on human affairs in the natural world. What is astronomy? The definition Google tells us, the branch of science that deals with celestial objects, space, and the physical universe as a whole. Interesting. So, 
Some people think that astronomy is perfectly acceptable while astrology is not. And think about all the types of um, ologies there are. There's zoology, there's uh, psychology, there's sociology, there is theology. And so we know that ology means knowledge. This is star knowledge because astro or aster is star. So just to put things into perspective a little bit, some people think it's evil. Some people think it's a blueprint made by God, given to his people to understand not just themselves, but the role that they play. And not everything is just so perfect. Not everything is glitter and glam. There's a high vibration and low vibration to everything. So it's not an excuse to stay where you're at mentally. It gives you a guideline of how to change and how to improve, honestly. So, um, oh Lord have mercy, Luna, thank you. Okay, so upper room furnished and prepared. Prepared. Um, G2092, Hedomos, he from an old noun, Hedios, fitness, adjusted, that is ready, prepared, made ready, readiness to our hand. So, he, the, the man with the pitcher of water, which think Aquarius, holding the pitcher of water, right? It's the water bearer, even though it's an air sign. It's happening right before our eyes in biblical perspective. So the man is holding the pitchers of water. Jesus says, follow him. He did. He will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. Hmm, interesting. Astronomy is fully prepared, is already ready, right? And there, make me, make thee ready so we can come, basically. And he says, um, where is the guest chamber? Oh, wait, hold on. Um, so, where are we at? I'm sorry. Okay, so, make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and they found as he had said unto them and made ready for the Passover and in the evening he cometh with the twelve. I relate to that because I was in a place where I loved so much but God through my natal chart that he gifted me that he showed me how to get there through the word and when I went to an astrology class they weren't teaching me anything what God was showing me through the Bible that aligned with it just just as much, if not more. And I was like, wow, that's incredible. And so I did a lot of learning and I listened to what I was seeing, what I was hearing, what I was being told through scripture, through the blueprint that was given to me at my birth, right? And I listened and I left the place I was at and went into the city, sh shook, I shook the dust from my feet and I, everything God told me was going to happen to me has happened and things that are happening now are better than I could have even imagined. And so that's, and that's just a part of my testimony, which I'm beyond thankful for. So I'm going to get her off because she's scratching me not intentionally i just need to cut her nails so so i find that so interesting so and then we can go down and we can even hear the lord say jesus jesus the christ himself what does he say in mark 14 he says As they prepared the Passover and got it ready for them, he went and he told his disciples, verse 2, verse 23. And as they did eat, Jesus took the bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it, the cup. It's potoreion, a drinking vessel, by extension, the contents thereof, that is a cup full, a draught, figuratively a lot or fate. 
it comes it's a derivative of the alternate g this is g for two to one it's a this word is a neuter of a derivative of the alternative g4095 which is pino pio pu the first is a prolonged form of the second which together with the third form occurs only as an alternative in certain tenses to imbi imbibe literally to figuratively drink and he said unto them this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And I drink is literally the same word um, to imbibe. Imbibe. Okay. And verily I say unto you, I drink no more. And then when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So, very interesting. What's also very interesting is the Torah, right? The Torah is all about, um, I'm sorry, the tarot is all about the Torah. The Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. Now, when I was reading this earlier, I had a thought and it came to me and I did not say this earlier in, in the old video right here. Jeremiah 2.13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out, hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no wa water. So, the two, the two evils, they have forsaken me, or God, the for fountain of living waters, and hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. And, um... And in John 4, Christ actually says that um, he would have given the woman at the well living water. And he talked about how, um, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's very important. Um, because when we go to Jer um, Genesis... 40 KJV remember I can go to this in my in the concordance Genesis 40 Okay so this in this in this story um Joseph um is in prison and the Pharaoh at the time actually put his butler, which was his cupbearer, and his chef. So his head chef and his head um, cupbearer in prison with Joseph. Excuse me. I highly recommend going and reading this story for yourself. Genesis 40. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to hit some highlights. So um, what happened in this was... The two, the chief cupbearer and the chief chef, both had dreams, okay? And Joseph was able to interpret them, okay? So, um, they looked sad one day, right? And he asked Pharaoh's officers, this is Joseph, he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and he said unto him, My dream, behold, a vine was before me. And he goes and he describes his dream. And Joseph interprets it and says, basically, you have, you have a second chance of life, okay? And then the baker tells him his dream. And he basically says, the Pharaoh is going to have your head, basically, just like John the Baptist. This, the, but he didn't say that, okay? Um, so anyways, and but he did tell the guy um, who was going to have a second chance of life, the butler, you know, to don't forget me when you, when you get free from here. Please don't forget me. And he's like, oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, and Joseph answered, okay, and within 
three days shall Pharaoh lift up. Okay. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. This is verse 20 in Genesis 40. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again. And he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted it. And he and did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but he forgot him. Okay. So when we look up the butler, so when we look at the butler, the butler, it's H8248. Remember when it's an H, it's Hebrew. When it's a G, it's Greek. The, the New Testament's in Greek. The Old Testament is in Hebrew. So shaka, a primitive root to quaff, that is to casually to irrigate or furnish a potion to. Cause to give to, to let, make to drink, drown, moisten water. And you can look at another few um, examples there if you want a deeper study. And then, so he, he restored the chief butler unto his butlership. What is butlership? It's H4945, mashke, properly causing to drink. That is a butler by implication, intrusively to drink itself figuratively a well watered region butler ship cup bearer drinking fat pastured water from h 8248 a primitive root to quaff that is casually to irrigate or furnish a potion to cause to give to let make to drink drown moisten water and when you when you look at the word cup remember jesus had the cup. He said, this is my blood, which was shed for many. And, and Jesus rose after three days, right? This is kind of a, um, what's that word where they reflect each other, where the old Testament and the new Testament reflect each other. Sometimes some people say that the old Testament has no meaning, but it very much does. Like the, the, you can't have the old Testament without the new Testament. You can't have the new Testament without the old Testament. So I've always heard that. So when you look at the word cup in the old Testament, Oh, there's Luna. Okay. What you doing girl? Uh, what does it say? The cup, um, H three, five, six, three Co's or costs. From an unused root, meaning to hold together a cup as a container, often figuratively a lot, as a as if a potion, also some unclean bird, probably an owl, perhaps from the cup-like cavity of its eye. Cup, small owl, and you can compare that with a, another um, definition if you want to take your studies deeper. But is that not so interesting? It's amazing to me, honestly. Okay, so we went through Genesis 40, we went through Mark 14. Oh, hi, honey. Um, uh, whenever Jesus broke the bread, that was also another way for him to, um, it was like prophetic knowledge of him telling the disciples that he consents to what Christ wanted to do through him without without just coming out and saying it, honestly, because in John 19, sorry, the battery died. Um, but the lunar aspect of the new moon is incredibly important, especially since it lasts about a year. Um, but even looking at last month's new moon in Capricorn, and this month's new moon, which Capricorn was all about time, right? And um, structure and being um, bound by certain rules and regulations and the laws. Where Aquarius is more about future. It's future minded. It's um, humanitarian like. It's friendships. It's the internet. It's uh, the groups we choose to surround ourselves with. It's also astrology even. So thinking about all of these interesting aspects to, you know, one idea, remember 
there's multiple opportunities for each thing. So it's not all good, it's not all bad. There is a choice to be made. That's why God gave us free will. So some of the very interesting aspects that I want to bring into this to give it more of a biblical um, understanding and underlie is a few of the scriptures. Since the Chinese New Year was on Saturday, the, uh, was on February 10th, 2024, and the new moon happened on February 9th, 2024. It's, it's interesting considering we're talking about time, we're talking about the future, and what's happening on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, which is um, February 14th, 2024, it's Ash Wednesday, and it's um, Valentine's Day. This is what we celebrate in the Gregorian calendar. Uh, what's interesting about Ash Wednesday is it's a cath uh, Catholicism uh, tradition to welcome in and to remember the 40-day fast, the 40-day and 40-night fast that Jesus went through in the wilderness. Um, it's the first day of Lent, um, and Tuesday actually of this year is um, February 13th, 2024, is Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras. It's where people... Eat, 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 and celebrate as much as they can because they're about to start Lent the next day. Okay, so uh, it marks the start of the 40-day period or allusion to the separation of Jesus in the desert to fast and pray. It's six weeks of penance before Easter, which is, as you know, the, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Um, it's a movable feast and it's not the same every year in um, the, the Gregorian calendar and it's actually Easter is determined by the second full moon after the spring equinox and oh I'm sure I'm sorry I think I said second it's actually the first full moon following the spring equinox and the equinox is the time or date twice a year at which the sun crosses the celestial equator when the day and night are approximately equal length, uh, approximately about September 22nd and March 20th. So, uh, Passover begins on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, and it ends after nightfall, April 30th, 2024. It's so late um, in this year, in 2024, because of the Jewish... Um, calendar how it doesn't align correctly with um the american ca the gregorian calendar excuse me um because it's built in it, theirs is a lunar calendar and the lunar calendar is about 11 days shorter than the solar years so an extra month is added to those certain years to make up the difference and we do have a leap year this year so that's also another interesting aspect okay so to bring a biblical um perspective to this understanding i want to talk about not very much i don't want this to be much longer uh but psalm 137 it does refer back to the making of the bed and um it also talks about like high vibration low vibration and either place we go we can find christ there if we're willing to open ourselves so uh, Psalms 139, I'm sorry. I think I keep saying 137 and I'm not exactly sure why, but I do. Um, if I ascend up into heaven, this is verse eight in Psalms 139, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hides not from thee, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for you have possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. For I praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knows right well. And you can continuously read on, and it's just music to your ears, honestly. Uh, there's also a few other things like Isaiah 28. We won't go much into that, but it is very, very important concerning what we're reading here. So um, a little bit more. There's just so much to read in Psalms 20 or Isaiah 28. So highly recommend that. And then um, a few things I 
was also brought to um, within my studies within the past couple days now since Friday, a little bit before then essentially, so um, since uh, February 8th, 2024 in the Gregorian calendar, um, I was brought to, uh, to a few of these verses in Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, the reason I'm bringing these up is because Aquarius is the water bearer. It's actually an air sign. So when you hear Aquarius, a lot of people automatically think, oh, it's a water sign, but it's not. It's an air sign, which is, um, you know, something we can feel, but we can't necessarily like see it all the time. You can see it in action, but you can't really see the air itself. And so that's kind of Aquarius. You can't see the future, but you can, you can get a pretty good grasp of what the future will look like based on things that are happening now, because the now is um, a part of the future. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, that's how a mountain can be made into a molehill and things of that nature. So when we're thinking about this, we're thinking about the future and we're thinking about now and we're thinking about the time we have now and the structures we have now in order to make a better future, not just for us, but for everybody around us, for the earth, you know, the water bearer is not just pouring water into where their foot is, but they are also pouring water onto the earth where they're kneeling. And this is, this is important if you're more of a subjective learner or if you're more of a figurative learner. It's important to understand that we need to be not so selfish like the Western world has become. We need to be thinking more of the future. We need to be thinking more of who's coming after us, our children, our grandchildren, uh, the people who are surrounding us, the earth itself. Uh, it's, it's mind blowing the, the things that people think are correct. And it's just, it's nonsense, unfortunately. And I think the main reason I'm bringing all this up is to, to ask yourself, what water are you drinking? Have you hewn for yourself a broken cistern which holds no water? Have you forsaken the Lord? Have you forgot him? Have you forgotten the, the, the person who interpreted what God was telling you? Because remember, like in Genesis 40, all interpretations belong to God. Are you forgetting the, the Christ who died for you? Are, like, are we, are we living our daily lives with tunnel vision, thinking about the man-made creations that we've created? And when I say we, I mean the generations before us, because when you get born, you just kind of get thrown into this area. And remember, children become toddlers, toddlers become preteens, preteens become teenagers, teenagers become adults, adults become the elderly. <laughs> so we're all one. We all come from one and we're all going to the next. And so that's time for you again. And so when we, when we think of these things, are we, are we drinking the right water figuratively and literally spiritually? Are we taking in the correct, the clean water that's actually going to help us grow and thrive? Or are we content in the dirty water? Um, are we going towards Jesus who is the fountain of living water? And if we, you know, have the water that he's giving, we will have wellsprings of water bubbling up within us. Or are we drinking the water that's mentioned here in Jeremiah six, seven or seven as a fountain casts out her waters. So she casts out her wickedness, violence and spoil is heard in her before me continually is grief and wounds. Does that sound terrible? It is terrible. Or are we going to the word, which is the water of life? It is the consuming fire. God is the, is a consuming fire, right? He is the sword of the spirit. 
Remember, Christ did not come to bring peace, but a sword, he said. And so is he the spirit, the Holy Spirit? What he brings, he gives us that gift, right? Because he went to sit on the right hand of the Father. And so what is the Holy Spirit? It's the wind. It's He breathed his breath of life within us. And Genesis, what is that? Two? Genesis two, three? And... I don't even know. Most of this is just coming from within. I just wasn't even planned to talk about. So um, that's the thing. What water are we listening to? What water are we going to? What water are we taking in? And is it good water? Or is it something that should be avoided? Is it something that's going to benefit us now and in the future? And those around us in the earth? And generations to come or is it poisoning us poisoning the earth poisoning those around us and setting up future generations for failure these are all questions we should be asking ourselves within this lunar Aquarian year-long cycle to be honest yes and that's Genesis 2 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So, think about it. Are you doing the work? Are you going to the word and having that time with the Lord, which is him talking and speaking to us, right? Or are you doing all the talking and praying and praying and praying and, and thinking, you know, this is my conversation with the Lord. If you're doing all the talking, what kind of relationship is that, to be honest? And and do you want to hear the Holy Spirit? Do you want him to hear you? Or is your heart hardened? Because there's several times in the word where the Bible says, you know, if you hear the word of the Lord, harden not your heart. And talks about his people in Israel, about how they have a hard neck or hard heart. And we're called not to be that way, right? We're called to circumcise our heart and to be made into a new creation. Remember, there will be new heavens, new earth, and we are also called to be a new creation. And so what's all of this is coming to, are you doing the work or are you putting the work onto somebody else? Are you allowing what are you are you being pollinated? Because pollination can happen through the air. And yes, it's winter here in the in in the western world, but it's also almost that time to start thinking about what what's going to happen. Are we planting the garden? Are we are who's going to pollinate that air species the wind right these are um, pollination opportunities that come naturally but there are artificial ways to be pollinated which I'm not saying are good or bad but when you're always going somewhere else for what's needed how how helpful and realistic is that? Is it just saving you time or is it wasting your time? You know, because the Bible says over and over, especially in Jeremiah, uh, talking about the people who claim God as they're almighty, they're rock, they're, they're authority. But I want to share this with you that you know you are capable of understanding you're capable of learning you're capable of repenting which is changing the way you think when you change your brain you change your nervous system which is connected to your spinal cord which is connecting your whole body right which is very powerful about a lot um, unfortunately, it talks about, but this, uh, verses 23 on, but this people has a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. 
Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that gives rain, both the former and the latter. In his season, he reserves us unto the pointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. This is important, not just individually, but collectively. Why? Because our iniquities have turned away these things and our sins have withholden good things from us as a people. We hear drought, 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 drought. Why is there so many droughts? Hmm. I don't think we would be having so many droughts if the God who created rain, the former and the latter, was pleased with his people. You see what I'm saying? The water bearer, the water bringer, the, not just not just to the drinking sources, but to the earth as well, right? Think. Um, okay, so. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that sets snares and they set a trap. They catch men. Instead of being fishers of men, they're catching men by setting traps and snares. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. And who did Jesus say would be the hardest to get into the kingdom of heaven? The rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. And not judging as in, ew, like being judgmental, but as in bringing justice. And fighting for them until there is justice, essentially. Believing, fighting for, and advocating for equity. And equality. They are waxen. Okay. Verse 29, shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? So, just like Hezekiah, oh man, I believe that's Isaiah 39. Hezekiah showed everything in his house, and like we said, in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly blueprint, there in my father's house, there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I'd go to make a place for you. Jesus said that. And when we break all that down like we have in the previous video, it's easy to see that there may be a lot more that we don't know. So, and that's okay. Um, but in um, Isaiah 39 KJV, uh, we see that Hezekiah showed him everything in his house. There wasn't something, there wasn't anything that he didn't show his enemies essentially. Okay, this is verse 5. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thy house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall, that shall issue from thee, which you shall beget, shall they take away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. He said moreover, For there shall be peace and truth in my days. Which was not <laughs> um, the best thing he could have said because those were his children. And unfortunately, there are still many people today saying, oh, it's fine, it's fine, because it's fine. I don't need to think about the future generations because there's peace and truth in my day. So what's it to me? I won't be here to think about the future generations. So it's none of my business. But it is our business. Some, something about, I'm hearing, something about the desolate lands. 
I think it was, in, yeah, okay. Jeremiah 12. It's a very interesting passage, um, but we're going to go ahead and read um, verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourns unto me, and the whole land is made desolate, because no man lays it to heart. And it goes on to talk about what God has done and what will do if his people do not repent, change the way they think. And I think that's the meaning of this, is that we as a collective, individually first, and then collectively, not only change the world for our benefit, but for the future generation's benefit. They're counting on us. Um, yeah, and I think that's all I have to say today. Thank you for joining me. If you made it through, all the way through, um, go ahead and post your favorite emoji down below. I would uh, love to <laughs> congratulate you <laughs> for making it through this video. Um, I know it's taken me a very long time to get it um, up, but you know what? We persevered and we're doing the thing. So God bless you. May you stay blessed. May you find rest in this wild era that we're in. And may you drink the cup that Jesus gives. That he says, this is the blood of his body. And he shed, he shed his blood for those who would be willing to accept it. It was shed for many. And I pray that you would Take part in the chief priest, Jesus the Christ, who is our Savior, King, and Lord of Lords. And it's amazing to be a part of the fountain of living waters that he gives. And so I encourage you to take part, to be a part of that and to live it out in your life. Don't just depend on somebody else to do the work for you or to have that relationship for you because it's very powerful, it's really beautiful, and it's insurmountable, the relationship that one can have with their savior if they are just willing to work through that fear within themselves and get to the wonder because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So I hope this encourages you during this lunar cycle and I hope that you have learned something and I hope that you continue continuing on. <laughs> May God bless and keep you. Love Pellet. When we're thinking about this, we're thinking about the future, and we're thinking about now, and we're thinking about the time we have now, and the structures we have now, in order to make a better future, not just for us, but for everybody around us, for the earth. We need to be thinking more of the future. We need to be thinking more of who's coming after us, our children, our grandchildren, uh, the people who are surrounding us, the earth itself. Um, if I ascend up into heaven, this is verse 8 in Psalms 139, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. There's a high vibration and low vibration to everything. So it's not an excuse to stay where you're at mentally. It gives you a guideline of how to change and how to improve, honestly. Do not interpretations belong to God? Two, four, eight. Remember when it's an H, it's Hebrew. When it's a G, it's Greek. The the New Testament's in Greek. The Old Testament is in Hebrew. 
are we drinking the right water figuratively and literally 